This episode of Shamanic Philosophers is being recorded on March 21st, 2023. And tonight we're going to do an update on current situations and the fact that financial collapse could be imminent. <music> Yeah, so uh, interesting times, you know, um, I wasn't going to do an update, and then this stuff came up, and I was like, ah, crap, I guess probably ought to do an update. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I, there's other things to be worried about right now, uh, you know, if you've prepared anyways, and if you haven't prepared, well, um, whoops, um, so, yeah, it, it makes it hard for me to want to really do too many updates because it's like, eh, I got other things on my mind. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, I think it's worth it to to make people aware of what's going on. And there's, there's a situation that's come up and uh, a few people are talking about it. Of course, all the, all the, some of the better financial uh, guru uh, types, commentators uh, are all talking about it. But there's an element to it that I don't hear them talking about, and I, I, many of them are smart enough that I figure they probably recognize the fact they just don't want to creep the hell out of people that badly. But I have, uh, I don't know, I, I got a severe lack of taste uh, sufficient enough to creep the people, hell out of people. Um, I don't know. Whatever. Um, so, yeah, I figured I might as well bring it up. And uh, it does go around the idea, of not just banking collapse, uh, but, you know, complete financial Armageddon. Uh, if what I am seeing was to come to fruition, and at this moment it must be considered absolute speculation on my part, uh, yeah, it would be a shit show. It would be an absolute uh, hellfire and, and brimstone horrific uh, welcome to the jungle Armageddon sort of uh, situation. So, uh, you know, we can basically hope that I'm wrong, and who knows, I could be. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I, I don't have details about, but I, you know, I see a pattern here, and, you know, I'm a big pattern thinker kind of guy, and so when I see a pattern, it gets me a little bit worked up. You know, that's a, it's a skill that is not always proven to be correct, but it's been proven to be correct a far more of the time than it's been proven to be wrong. And so I do tend to trust uh, my observation of patterns. So here's the situation, more or less. As you may be aware, uh, the, uh, the debt ceiling in America has expired. We've reached the debt ceiling, so they're, you know, basically the funding for the United States government has reached its, uh, you know, temporary uh, height. And uh, so the Congress has to re-extend this debt ceiling so that the government can keep printing money and getting us in hellacious and larger amounts of debt and also continue to service all of their, their, their responsibilities. Uh, and this has run into a bit of an impasse, uh, more than a bit of an impasse, as uh, the Republicans and the Democrats, uh, wily douchebags one and all, they uh, uh, see fit to, uh, to play politics, as, as has been done in the past. Now, in the past, you know, there's this whole issue about, you know, extending our debt limit which is essentially like signing yourself up for a credit card, you know, granting yourself a credit card. And in the past, when our credit card is, uh, has run up to its debt limit, we've just always said, yeah, magic wand, bibbidi-bobbidi-boom, and, 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 and we just extend give ourselves a new credit card. And we, uh, it's, it's become a bit of the fashion to uh, play politics around this, uh, to point at, you know, for one side to point at the other side and say, it's their fault, it's their fault. Uh, and try to get some cheap political points, you know, oh, the Republicans are going to hold the government hostage, they want to hurt the little person, deny them their income, oh, yeah, they, they're going to they're gonna withhold your grandmother's Social Security, and blah, blah, blah. Or, the, oh, the Democrats are spendthrift crazy people on all these social issues, and yeah, we need to be fiscally responsible in America, and <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. Which, of course, is no evidence that anyone actually supports that position. They're absolutely just 
full of shit, and this is totally, uh, totally political theater. Uh, but they they play this game, and uh, we're we're in a situation now where we've passed this debt ceiling. It was one of the reasons why they've had a hard time bailing out the banks. They don't have the wherewithal to just print the money because we're kind of at the debt ceiling sort of issue. And uh, and so there's uh, that that's been left sitting there. Uh, and so you hear a little bit of rumblings about it in the background as the Republicans come out and say, well, we tried to talk to the Biden White House and they don't want to talk to us. And the Biden White House saying, oh, we're absolutely all for it. They need to extend the debt ceiling. They just need to give us absolutely everything we ask for and, 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 and just do everything we tell, say. And, uh, and so the two sides aren't talking to each other and, and drama, 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 bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. And uh, they're, they're, they're coming in here to over the next several weeks into a, uh, a standoff, a political, you know, Mexican standoff kind of situation. So what we've got here lined up is we've got the, the, the Republicans uh, hot to trot to prove that they're hot shit and that they're the responsible fiscal party going into the next election, trying to get people to vote for them and so on and so on. And so they run the House of Representatives and all of the budget issues and everything originate in the House of Representatives. So they kind of hold the purse strings and they don't want to fund or the, the, the Biden White House uh, with all of their programs that they're doing and everything like that, many of which are extremely detrimental to this country. So, you know, the, the, there's good reason to not want to fund them, but ultimately they, they will. Um, but they don't want to. They don't want to look weak. They don't want to look ineffectual. You know, they don't want to look like they actually look as, as they actually are. They want to look like big, tough guys who are going to, you know, force some some financial responsibility on this situation here at this late hour uh, at, at, at the point of complete and utter collapse. Now we're going to have some fiscal responsibility around this place. Yeah, sure, right. Um... But they got a, they got this game to play. They they've got it. They got to slap their their Peter on the on the on the uh, board and measure it out and show how manly they are. And uh, so they're they're they've not extended the debt ceiling, and uh, um, and we're getting very close to default. You know, and 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 default basically means that they're going to have to start. You know shutting down government agencies, scrapping Social Security, scrapping food stamps. Of course, obviously, they'll you know, push it off on, on the average person instead of themselves as much as humanly possible. But they're going to have to start scrapping certain things in order to, to liberate the money. So even though we're going to hit default on the 15th of June, theoretically, officially, it, 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 they, can, they can you know, scrape and money together out until September. So uh, it's not as dire as, as all that, theoretically, even though there'd be a lot of pain. A lot of people would be very up in arms if they did not continue, you know, funding Social Security and food stamps and Medicare and Medicaid and so on. People would tend to, you know, lose their shit. Um, and so uh, it's not as dire as it could be pointed, painted to be, but of course they're going to make it as bad as possible. And, uh, and what have you. So you've got the, uh, the, the Republicans trying to look tough. On the flip side of that, the Democrats want money. They want all the money they want. They need money to bail out the banks. They want to send money to Ukraine. They want social programs. They want all these different things. They want their green agenda. They want all these different things. And they want to be able to spend their money as freely as they see fit. And especially sending lots and lots and lots of money to Ukraine. Billions, hundreds of billions more to Ukraine. Um, so there's a real, you know, real impasse here. So the Republicans figured, and they've been very obvious and vocal about it, that they're going to put some pressure on the Democrats here and make it, you know, oh, look at them, they're, they're, they're not fiscally responsible. We're going to stand up and be fiscally responsible. And they're going to play this game for at least a little while. You know, it never it tends to last very long. And I don't see these people having the balls to actually do anything that would make anybody kind of grumpy. They just got to put on a, you know, on a display 
for how badass they are and stuff like that. Well, the Democrats don't want to be made to look bad. You know, we are coming into an election cycle. Biden's about to formally announce his presidential candidacy. Apparently, it's already been videotaped. It's just going to be released at a specific date and time and blah, blah, blah. So it doesn't look very good for Biden to come out and announce his presidential candidacy on the back of having the government shut down and people suffering and, and, and a bad economy and all these different things. So uh, the Democrats have come up with a plan. They've been hinting about it. They've been talking about it. They've been, you know, saying the soft part out loud, sort of dropping hints or, or perhaps, you know, Freudian slipping things, which, of course, could be misdirection, but, you know, it, it, it's hard to say. We'll take them at face value for the, for the moment. And they've been coming out and saying, you know, kind of to themselves, but enough that all the financial people and a lot, a lot of political people have noticed that they intend to uh, turn this back on the Republicans. That they're gonna they're gonna pl play a 180 on the Republicans, or so they're hinting or stating that they're going to do. And the suggestion is right now that as soon as the Republicans fail to vote or vote no on an extension to the debt ceiling which is coming up in like a week, a uh, week and a half, something like that. I don't, I don't remember the exact date, but very shortly, that the Democrats have already planned to crash the stock and bond market on the exact same day or on the very next day as soon as the Republicans vote no. And so, of course, you have this major crisis. You got like a 2008 fi uh, housing collapse sort of crisis. Uh, where you suddenly got all this pressure. It's like, oh my God, the stock market just fell, whatever, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 points. Uh, you guys better extend the debt ceiling right now or else it's all your fault. It's Armageddon. The bonds are selling and everything and everything's becoming worthless and everyone's retirement's disappearing and every all the Social Security is becoming worthless. You destroyed Social Security. So they're planning on creating this big big crisis moment uh, to to turn it back on the Republicans and make the Republicans look bad. So we got this, you know, this real bigger dick sort of contest going on between the two parties uh, where the Republicans want to make the Democrats look bad, the Re Democrats want to make the Republicans look bad. So they're going to be playing these financial shenanigans. And of course, the fact that it hurts people is <laughs> completely beside the point, doesn't matter at all. And, of course, uh, once everyone's managed to uh, toot their horn uh, enough, uh, then the, everyone will, you know, roll over and basically give carte blanche to, uh, to more credit uh, as much as they want and so on. As soon as they, you know, as soon as political points have been scored. So uh, this would be bad enough just on face value, just on what it is. This would be a serious issue. Uh, this, uh, the, the, you know, in the best of times, this might just be a, a hiccup, a, a bit of political theater. The more emotionally sensitive people get all fussy and get their panties in a wad, uh, increasingly more literally. Um, and, uh, and, and then it would pass, and those people who love drama would have their drama, and those people who like to panic would have their opportunity to panic, and then they would just you know, sign off on more criminality and just do keep doing the same kind of bullshit shit they always do, no matter what, anyways. And everyone would forget about it and life would go on. But in the situation we're, we're in right now globally, this is probably a really bad time to be playing this kind of nonsense. And as I look at this situation, you know, in the situation itself, a lot of people are very worried that uh, the Democrats are going to crash the bond and stock markets uh, permanently, which I, I very much, very much doubt that is their intention to do. Uh, and 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 then so everyone's a lot of people are getting their 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 dusters in a fuss over this idea that everything's going to crash and it's going to stay down. And of course, generally, what do they do? They'd let it drop a little ways and, of course, use that as pressure on the Republicans, get them to print the stuff, and then they'd shore the market back up. And so, you know, you'd have this hiccup, but it wouldn't be a long-lasting hiccup. In a month or two, it'd be back to where it was, no matter what, anyways. And it was just enough to, you know, to hold it over the Republicans' head about what horrible, evil people they are. And, uh, and this would be kind of the game. But 
something's being missed here, and uh, it's a pretty big something, and um, it, it, it's a pretty important something, and it, it potentially turns this little political drama, this, this, this wag the dog uh, Sunday matinee, into a real Armageddon shit show. And I don't know that it's going to happen, but it's like a golden opportunity. It is a wide open invitation for absolute <laughs> destruction uh, in, in a way that it would just leave people shocked, stunned, and, and staggered uh, by, by the situation. And it's clear as friggin' day that this is, uh, at least to me, it's very clear that this is like an inevitable sort of thing that... Unless the whole world has been told, don't sweat it, folks, this is just theater, and even if they have been, that, you know, you could really expect uh, these bad, worse things to happen. And so what are these worse things? Well, here's the thing. They've given a date and a time for when everyone's assets are going to become worthless. You know, the, the situation I just laid out is the Republicans are going to want to play strong, the Democrats are going to allow the market to crash, the bond market to become worthless, the stock market to, be, to take a big dip. Uh, and they've basically said what the date and time... You know, the Democrats have been dumb enough to actually put out what the date and time of this would be. Uh, and even if we don't have the specific date and time exactly right, it's, it's still generally correct. So they say, you know, immediately after this vote, if they don't vote yes... We crash the economy. And of course, we know also that there's June 15th, which is the default date, and that's written out in stone unless they fix things. And so we know that date's out there. But I don't think, I, I, I'd be surprised if it takes that long. So, you, you know, it's one of these things where you have to ask yourself, if I told you to your face that I'm going to get 20 of my friends heavily armed and come to your house tomorrow and I'm going to steal everything in your house, all your assets, everything you own. I'm going to clean you out. What would you spend the next 24 hours doing? Well, aside from getting your own guns ready and maybe getting your own 20 or 30 friends, uh, another thing you might do, and, and a thing you might probably, very probably do, would be taking everything of value you have and getting it out of your house. You know, that perfectly reasonable thing, and whether you moved it to a storage shed, or you gave it to friends, or you gave it to relatives, or you put it in a safe deposit box in the bank, or whatever, anything of great value, you'd want to get it out of the house in case I actually show up and I actually try to steal everything that you have. And this is a perfectly normal reaction. I mean, there was a, a, you know, this is the sort of thing where if you know you're going to incur a loss, you take such steps as to prevent that loss. You know, you try to preserve as much value as you possibly can. You try to, you try to hide your stuff. You try to keep your stuff, whatever it is. So we've got a situation here now where the, there, there are people out there in the world who aren't super fond of us right at the moment. And uh, they have been waging an economic war against us. And they have been hands down winning. And so we look at Russia, we look at China, basically the BRICS nations and others, uh, who kind of don't really feel that the U.S. has a super role going forward into the future, uh, economically and militarily and so on. They're, they're ready to cut the U.S. kind of out of things. And, uh, and they, they are keen to see uh, the U.S. be neutered. Uh, they have plans. So they also have a lot of bonds. Uh, also, a lot of our allies have a lot of bonds. Everybody's got a lot of bonds over the last you know, 70 years or whatever it's been since the petrodollar has been incepted. Um, everyone's got bonds. They had to buy dollars. To, in order to buy oil, that was the agreement. That was the that was the uh, you know the rule that the world lived by for the last seventy years. You must die, buy oil in dollars. 
And so countries that needed to have dollars on hand didn't always want dollars. They, you know, they'd, they'd hold stuff just in cash, but they wanted something else that was exchangeable, readily exchangeable for cash. So they bought bonds. And so everyone's got a lot of bonds. India's got a lot of bonds. Japan's got a lot of bonds. Russia's got a lot of bonds. China's got a lot of bonds. Everybody's got a lot of bonds. Well, now what the Democrats have basically done is they've come out and said, we're going to make all those worthless at a specific date and time. You know, we know when this vote is going to take place. And immediately after the vote, give or take a little bit, you know, give or take a few hours a day or whatever they decide to, whenever they decide to do it. We're going to render all those assets that all you people all over the world, we're going to render all of those assets 100% worthless. So like you and how you might respond if I threatened to come and steal your stuff, how do you think that these people might respond? Might they, in fact, try to get rid of all the bonds that they could possibly get rid of before such time as they become absolutely worthless? You know, seems like a re fairly reasonable thing. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, this this is the thing where Let's 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 run a scenario here. What what could happen? Let's say um, the Democrats have more or less said, more or less announced that they're going to crash the bond market right immediately after the the Republican vote. And let's you know, and it doesn't really matter how the Republicans vote in the in the, in this scenario. The Republicans could, could vote to actually extend the uh, credit. Or they could vote not to, and it wouldn't make any difference to this scenario. Well, if I'm sitting on a crap ton of assets, bonds in this case, if I'm sitting on a crap ton of assets and I recognize that they are about to become worthless, I'm going to probably do everything I can to get rid of those uh, bonds as fast as I can. So I'd start selling them off in fairly large chunks, as large as I dared, so that I didn't drop the price too much, but the goal would be just to clear my books of all the bonds possible. And I would know that I would have a cutoff date that all this must be done before the vote is taken. You know, whether it's a positive vote or a negative vote does not matter. I have to be out of bonds before that date because if the vote doesn't go to extending the credits, the debt ceiling, which it looks like it's not, then my assets become worthless. They can become absolutely zero valueless worthless. So if I'm going to get any value from them at all, I must get rid of all of them. So basically what the Democrats have done here, and I think it's quite unintentional on their part, it's just incompetence. They've set up a fire sale. And, you know, if you've ever watched, there, there, there's a good movie you can watch called Margin Call. And it kind of shows... Uh, in approximate terms, what happened in 2008 with the housing collapse, and uh, in in the story of the uh, of the uh, movie, there's a, a company that is not named, but it's kind of modeled after like Lehman Brothers and a couple others uh, that is engaging in the uh, you know a uh, mortgage backed security market back in 2008, selling buying and selling mortgages on houses that have no value whatsoever. And it gets to a point where they suddenly realize that there, there's a guy in who, who looks at risk in their company, realizes, holy crap, uh, the market is turning, the market is crashing, all these assets are worthless. And if the market turns against us more than it has already, uh, the company will be bankrupt. It, it, the losses will be larger than than all the money we have. Uh, billions and billions, trillions of dollars will be completely obliterated and, and won't exist anymore. And so the drama of the show unfolds over the course of a long night where meetings are had, followed by other meetings, followed by politics, followed by whatever. And the long and the short of it is they decide that the only course of action that they have is that, that is possible to save the company is to, as soon as the market opens up, to sell all their assets while they still have some value and just clear the books, because otherwise they go bankrupt. Now, admittedly, they're selling assets that are absolutely valueless, they know are going to blow up in everybody else's accounts, 
Uh, so they, they are destroying the people that they're selling to, and they know it. But that's the only way that they themselves manage to survive. And we've got a very similar situation that's been set up here. Uh, so, you know, if, if people know that the bonds are about to become worthless, even if just temporarily, even if just for a day or two, even if just for a week or two, uh, if they know that the bonds are going to become worthless and there's a certain amount of uncertainty as to whether or not they will uh, come around or whatever, the, uh, the interest of everybody holding bonds in the world is to get rid of those bonds before that vote takes place. Now, admittedly, if people are our allies, maybe they get told behind the day, don't worry, this is just a simple drama that we're playing, blah, 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 don't even worry about it, your investment is secure, so forth and so on. Then it comes to the question of, do they trust us? Which maybe they do and maybe they don't. On the flip side of that is that some of these bondholders, quite a few of these bondholders, are not friendly to us. They are, they are people who are, way, who are engaged in economic warfare, or we are engaged with economic warfare against them. They are engaged in economic warfare back against us, and they hold bonds. And they hold more than enough bonds to completely eviscerate this country financially. So, just out of their own self-interest, we've already produced a situation where they are now invited to dump those bonds aggressively uh, going into this situation just to protect any assets that they have, just to not lose any money. And that's not even necessarily malicious. They can actually write this off as just, you know, fiduciary responsibility and being fiscally prudent. Now, of course, if they have an agenda against us, <laughs> duh, yeah. The, obviously, they kind of do. They have an even better reason to want to dump their bonds before this even happens. And, uh, and that is, of course, to economically eviscerate, uh, to, to castrate the United States uh, in all ways, effectively, for 10, 20 years going out. I mean, it'll, it'll take us a while to recover if this was to transpire. It, it's going to take us quite a while to recover, at least 10 years, minimal. So that, that would take us off the battlefield. You know, that would be the end of Ukraine. That would be, you know, Taiwan would be open door. Uh, you know, we wouldn't be meddling in anybody else's stuff. We're out of the Middle East. We're out of Afghanistan. We're out of, you know, everywhere. We're out, we would be out, we'd have to shut down all of our bases, bring our military back if we could even afford to do that. You know, it's not entirely outside the realm of possibility that the military would just get stranded all over the world, much like they did in Afghanistan, because they just don't have the money to fly them home. Um, so, yeah, bit of a bit of a bad, embarrassing end to uh, to the whole situation. And this is uh, very likely to happen, like I said, just purely out of self-interest. And, and even more ha likely to happen if, if, if it's done maliciously. So um, this is where I say, you know, uh, financial Armageddon, you know, financial collapse, financial destruction could, just could be imp imminent. And, uh, you know, obviously I don't know what's going on in the back rooms. Nobody's confiding in me. Uh, they never would. They never do. Um you know, we, we do know that uh, the banks are buying gold. We know that the largest short positions in silver are getting rid of those short systems, uh, positions going long, which basically says that the game is over. And, you know, I don't know how long it'll take them to clear their positions, but as soon as they do, they'll let things reverse. Uh, so we're getting all the signs that destruction is, you know, within months anyways and and probably possibly within weeks probably within months um it, even beside this stock and bond portfolio issue but now add on top of that that suddenly out of clear blue <clears throat> possibly as early as like monday or sometime very shortly thereafter you know, we could just start seeing countries, uh, allies and, and, and otherwise, just starting to sell bonds like at a steady, horrifically steady pace. 
And as it starts to pick up and as it starts to expand, uh, that it just becomes this cascading stampede as everybody in the world dumps their bonds uh, for whatever they can get for them. And actually, it could turn out that the stock, uh, the bond market crashes and is completely destroyed before the vote is ever taken. Because people just move to protect themselves. Or they move to destroy us, either way. We've, th- we've, <laughs> we've presented our jugular vein and asked them not to stick the knife in. Uh, that may not be a great policy. So if this was to occur, what sort of things would would happen? Well, you know, uh, immediately retirement accounts would be destroyed. Retirement accounts are required to hold bonds. So the bonds that they hold, either they would understand that this is happening and have to sell the bonds themselves, um, but of course it's unlikely they'd be able to clear them. They may not be able to sell them legally. Uh, they may not choose to sell them, and they would be end up having all of their assets, or a, a large percentage of their assets, completely wiped out. So retirement funds would be gone. A lot of funds, a lot of investment funds have to hold cash in bonds for security reasons. They would all be wiped out. And this would uh, immediately, of course, cause that uh, those who own stocks and everything to have to sell stocks to try to try to raise enough capital to remain solvent. You know, that their losses would be such that they'd have to raise capital B solvent. Likewise, most of these banks, these banks like uh, like Silicon Valley Bank and so on, which were in bond-related trouble already anyways, well, what happens if all those assets go to zero? You know, that's, that's, that's you know, $60 billion or $61 billion or whatever it is uh, in assets is suddenly are absolutely worthless, absolutely go to nothing. Um... Well, obviously, it very nearly wiped out the bank. Well, what if now the 1,800-some-odd banks that are in essentially the same position that Silicon Valley Bank was in, that suddenly all the bonds go to zero? Well, they'd be catastrophically wiped out as well, with no chance, because also the debt ceiling hasn't been extended just yet, uh, very little, minimal chance of, of bailout. Uh, of course, obviously, with all these funds going down, with all these banks going down, the stock market would also collapse. Uh, and almost, all, I mean, basically without banks, if you don't have credit, you can't run real estate. Real estate would collapse. You can't run industries. You, you, they would collapse. Transportation would collapse. All kinds of things would collapse because there's no credit and so on. It would become a cascading failure that wouldn't just take out the United States. It would take out most of all of Europe, you know, the Eurozone and NATO, uh, New Zealand, uh, Australia, most of the South Sea Islands, uh, possibly Mexico, maybe, maybe not Mexico, but probably Mexico, Canada, uh, UK, a lot of the Caribbean, uh, a lot of Southeast Asian countries, Korea, South Korea would be decimated. All these places that are either tied to the dollar or hold a lot of bonds or are you know heavily invested in in the dollar and the dollar system would just would shut down. You know the lights would just go go off. Um, you know, leaving you know all kinds of opportunities for craziness and chaos. And so you'd have this like absolute thing. Now there's a real question about. I mean, this is the actually reason why our enemies. Or our, or our opponents, uh, might not do it. Because so much of the world would go down, there's a real question, would they go down too? Can they weather the storm? If they can weather the storm, there's no reason not to take us out right now, right here at this moment. If they can't weather the storm, then maybe they let it slide because it's in their self-interest to do, their larger self-interest to do so. On the other hand, if they're willing to take the pain to completely wipe us off the table in a single move... They couldn't ask for a better setup than the one that the Democrats have given them, um, and, and the Republicans, to a certain extent, uh, have given them this beautiful opportunity to just completely, you know, remove us from the game entirely um, in, in one fell swoop. So we would see all this sort of stuff. I mean, you know, the... the, the Everything that people, I mean, and as far as in the United States, obviously it brings about chaos. 
because, uh, you know, it's not just an issue of the ATMs don't work, which obviously would be an issue. Uh, and, and credit, you know, any sort of electronic transfer doesn't go through. But all Social Security, all Medicare, Medicaid, all, all the food stamps, all that, all that entitlement stuff just vanishes in an instant. Um, and so people don't have medical care. They don't, can't feed themselves. Obviously, people would respond to that the way people have always responded to that all around the world throughout history, which is, say, not well. Um, you know, we would see the sort of toilet paper moment writ large as people tried to just get whatever they could get as fast as they could get it. And, uh, and so we could see a lot of social chaos from that. You know, there's a difference between rioting and looting. We would see looting, uh, at least initially. Now, as things wear on and, and people start to really suffer, then, then that potentially produces rioting. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh... This could cascade very quickly into a very, very ugly scenario. Um, and it's, it's hard to know what could be done. Now, admittedly, the United States supposedly has a large store of gold. I mean, that's the thing, is that if our, if our enemies really wanted to put it to us, the other thing they would do is not only just sell off all their, sto- all their bonds in a coordinated fashion to clear their decks, to, to fire sale their assets prior to the vote, that would be just prudent on their part. If they really wanted to put the stake in our uh, in our heart and sever our heads, uh, they would uh, at the same time announce a commodities backing and exchange for rubles or yuan or whatever. They would say, you know, the gold ba- gold back yuan, gold back ruble, possibly exchangeable for. And at that point. That that's we're we're done. We every anything and everything we do as this country, we'd have to pay for in resources, uh, including and particularly gold and silver. And no one would do business with us unless we coughed up gold and silver. Now, if we actually have all the gold and silver that we supposedly say that we have, uh, that's you know probably not enough. But it's enough to not be it be completely wiped out all in one fell swoop. Though we certainly would have to immediately stop all of our military actions and all of, all kinds of stuff would just have to come to a halt. All entitlements would have to come to a halt. The, most of the government would have to be laid off. You know, like 90-some-odd percent of the government would have to be laid off. Um, probably most of the parts of it that deserve to be laid off will actually be left intact, but... <laughs> Because uh, let, let's not suggest that people are going to bring, you know, like, come to their senses. Um, but this would be uh, this would be cat, quite catastrophic, uh, and and we would fare better than other countries that don't have gold and silver. But we would uh, we we would be hard pressed because you know if if you got a gold back you want, they all they have to do is say you know you either have to buy you on, uh, and they don't want dollars for you on, they want gold. Uh, they want gold for you on. They want resources. They want something like that for in exchange, um, and so dollars just won't do. And so we have to. We would have to then uh, use our make our gold available. Um, so yeah, it, it would be a very very treacherous. Uh, it would be a very shrewd and very utterly destructive move. It would be a, a complete checkmate for decades. Uh, that is here right at this moment has been presented on a golden platter to China and Russia and India and, and, and others. Um, and, and so there's the question is like, well, have we seen in the last couple of weeks, any evidence of that this might actually be unfolding? And the answer is uh, potentially yes. As the Japan, Japan basically has broken with the United States financially and has started to dump its bonds in a very serious way. Uh, and has and has uh, declared, you know, interest in the BRICS nations, and and is turning away from us and saying they're not going to buy any more bonds and so forth. So J- Japan jumped ship over the last like week. They jumped ship, uh, and that's a major blow for us. A humongous blow. They they have humongous amounts of uh, of bonds, and so uh, that is a humongous problem for us. And it shows that somebody out there is paying attention. And they are, in fact, uh, uh, starting to divest their bonds just right now at this time where that's kind of like uh, we're at our weakest when it comes to something like that. 
So now the thing would be to watch and say, do other countries start to follow suit? Is there sort of a cascading failure within this market? Does this develop into a fire sale, particularly like, say, Monday <laughs> or whatever? Does this develop into a fire sale on, on the bond market? And if it does, then you know, financial destruction is here. Uh, if this turns into a fire sale run on the bank, uh, domino falling destruction, uh, and, and, there's, and there's every reason why it should, even without any level of maliciousness involved. Like I said, the only thing that would save us from that is backroom deals. Or the fact that uh, the world is like, well, we can't divest ourselves just yet. You know, we've got to keep playing the game out a little longer. And that's pretty much what saved us for the last 20 plus years. But uh, because of the sanctions on Russia, it's forced Russia's hand to pull out of that. And there's increasingly a cascade of people going over to Russia's part on things. And so. Um, it's very, very probable that we're very close. And if they're not going to do it now, it may not. It may still happen within the very, very near future. Uh, especially if this, if this sort of wag the dog nonsense goes long. So let's say a situation occurs where the Republicans vote not to extend the debt ceiling. The Democrats make good on their threat to crash the stock market and the bond market. And this goes back and forth for, you know, a week, something like that. Three days, five days a week, uh, two weeks, something like that. And then they finally come around to their situation and so forth. They pump the markets back up. Everything recovers. And the world goes on. And, and somehow we got through all of that without people divesting. Well, at the same time, that shows a certain uh, that shows a great deal of problems with the security of everyone's investments. Because now, how much if if the government was willing to play that kind of a game, uh, how much do you trust them? You know, it, it, the whole idea of the value of bonds and the value of our money is based upon the full faith and credit of the Federal Reserve slash U.S. dollar system. Well, if they're playing this kind of political shenanigans, do you trust that next time it's not going to happen? Well, increasingly, no. You, you don't know whether it's going to happen or not. Increasingly, you wonder just how long can they keep this dog and pony show going. And so it really puts a uh, fire under people to, uh, to accelerate their severing themselves from the U.S. dollar. So... Even if we manage to get through this, and I, I'm premature as I often am, uh, and and I, um, you know, I'm seeing something that will eventually be an issue, but it's not going to be an issue for another, you know, whatever six months, year, year and a half. Uh, at the same time, this accelerates it. This does nothing to allay anybody's fears. This is does nothing but to heighten the urgency to separate for the world to separate themselves from the U.S. dollar. And to accelerate their bond sales and clear their clear their decks that much faster. Um, so it, it, either way, we end up in a worse situation than we have been in the past. So this is where I say it could be about you know this, this could be a destructive element. All the elements are there. It's a wide open invitation to our enemies to completely slit our throats. And, and leave us bled, bled out on the floor. This is, uh, you know, never has there been offered a more golden opportunity for our enemies to destroy us than is being offered right now. And if they don't take it, I'm really going to have to start, you know, be curious as to why. What exactly was the thing that did not cause that to happen? Um, you know, th 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 this is, you know... This is the sort of thing about sticking your face out and making, you know, you know, and saying, you know, come on, just hit me right, right once, right here, right on the jaw. Come on, sock it to me. And they just might, you know. They could easily, and they certainly want to. Uh, will calmer heads prevail? Maybe. Uh, maybe not. 